Well, so, I'm sorry to... Oh yes, I was talking about baby. I was talking about baby hippos and ha not being able to swim, and mom keeping it close to the edge of the water in order to make sure that it was safe and that it didn't drown. So she kept nudging it up against the side with her body. And at this point now, a few days old, it'll be absolutely fine to go into the centre of the dam as long as mom doesn't go too deep, because then what it'll do is it'll rest upon her back and then pop its nose up every now and again. So I've been looking, but it's very hard, especially with this blinding light, to try and see where she might be. Now Tristan used to work here and he said generally when the hippos gave birth they gave birth on the other side of the dam but that was when the, the dam had more water. It's now dried up on that end so our hippo pod tends to cluster elsewhere. There's a few stragglers there. Any babies? Apparently that was where the hippos used to keep the... There it is! There it is! There it is! Well done Tristan and his word of advice. There's mom over there, and little baby is there. There you go. Hi, little one. Is that that baby? Must be. No, that looks a little bit too large for the newborn baby. I think I got, a, got my hopes up. It's still a baby. Perhaps it is. It's hard to tell at this distance. And I'd love to go all the way to the other side, but we definitely, definitely won't have any signal there. It's very brave if it is a newborn baby because it's just moved right away from mum. Another baby. No, that's a hippo. That's just a hippo. <laughs> I'm getting overexcited at the prospect of baby hippos. Oh, Sherry, you want to know if this safari in Africa is different from natural Africa. This is, Sherry, to be honest, this is about as natural as it gets. We're in 8.5 million acres of... So it's, it's essentially a reserve that... South Africa, through the top northeastern corner of South Africa, right up to uh, Zimbabwe and into Mozambique. So it really is an absolutely massive area. There are houses, there are lodges here, um, and that's actually a really important way of helping to preserve conservation. So there's very few truly wild areas left on the African continent, if you want to call it wild, and that there's no human beings at all. Because the future of conservation in a country like South Africa or in countries like in Africa, tourists bring money. Money secures the future of conservation areas. So we see the lodges, we see the other game drive vehicles with their guests on safari. First of all, it gives them an incredible experience. And then second of all, it is uh, a great way to actually continue to keep areas like this conservation areas rather than them eventually being turned into farmland or something similar or mines for example so it's really very important so this is this is natural africa this is natural wild africa it is as wild as it gets every single animal out here is wild they behave in their own wild way, like these two hippo boys, sparring a little bit, keeping each other entertained, as they always do in that corner. I feel as though every time I've come here, there's a pair of hippopotamus nibbling at each other, or three hippopotamuses nibbling at each other. So, Sherry, this is truly wild. It really, really is. Um, if I were to get out and go walk up to that mommy hippo, for example, with her baby, she would definitely do me some serious damage. So it is a very special place. This is as natural as you can get. There are parts of Kruger. The Kruger National Park itself, I think the statistic is about 2% of it is accessible to the public. 2% of an area that is 8.5 million or 8.4 million acres. And just to give you an idea of how much of it is untapped. Very little roads. There are animals in there that have not seen human beings or vehicles, which I love. 